I was certainly attracted to male artists, and I figured I would just wash their brushes. If they just let me clean up after them, I could shine and bask, and every once in a while they'd say, that's nice. I remember there was a group from Black Mountain that started a uh, community up in Rockland County, and uh, David Weinrich was a big sculptor up there, and, and he was like the first artist I'd sat around with talking and I was like, oh, you know, and finally, and I was saying, but art and art and everything finally said to me, you know, stop, art is shit too. <laughs> I was stunned. <laughs> Never occurred to me. <laughs> What you were raised to do when I went to college was to be, you were going to get married, you were going to find somebody while you were at college because there wasn't any other option. I went to Gulf Park Junior College in Gulfport, Mississippi because they had great water ballet. <laughs> you could take music courses and psychology courses in case you had children and needed to know about that and little art and a little you were kind of the cultural and moral compass and the guy was supposed to go out and earn a living and rest up on the weekends. Uh, my first marriage was to a very traditional Republican engineer who was from Kentucky and had gone to Cornell, so I thought he was very exotic. He'd gone east. <laughs> so when we moved to New York and I started painting seriously, it was a big rift. Then I went back and got my master's at NYU and soon after left. So I started studying with uh, an artist named Richard Pousset Dart, and he firmly believed that abstraction was the only moral way to paint. It wasn't that it was uh, different or anything from figurative painting, it was just that the painting had evolved, according to him, to a point where it was pure, purely like music or poetry, and if you had an image that crept in, it was uh, inauthentic, and you were a bad person, <laughs> essentially. My second husband, well, we had six children between us, so that didn't leave much time. And I was teaching art in East Harlem to junior high students, so I didn't have a whole lot of energy left. Irony was not part of anything that anybody had been doing. I mean, you had big guys like de Kooning and Hoffman, and you had Klein and Pollock and all the giants with these big lofts, with these big brushes, making huge canvases. It was very masculine, going to Cedar Street Bar and getting drunk every night and talking about art, but they weren't, there wasn't a whole lot of money at stake anyway. I mean, I was impressed. You know, they were gods to me. They were like the pure thing. There weren't any women in that group. Yeah, then I met Leo about 30, 28 years ago. I never had a one-person show till I met him. He's been really supportive, and he's professional at what he does and expects me to be professional at what I do. Painting is sort of the least interesting thing right now, though there's a slight little bulge of it coming up again, but it's mostly a lot of video, you know, all new media are coming along and a lot of installation art and performance art and crossed mixed genres. I mean, what I do is the most kind of old fashioned thing that people can do now, which is to paint uh, on canvas a two dimensional surface. The point of us doing this is that I'm planning to give myself a celebration show in the form of a memoir, in the form of kind of an autobiography. It's going to be totally not about having critics or anything. I'm just going to invite all my friends, have a whole lot of food, a whole lot of music, and a lot of wine. <laughs> I have a lot of friends who are writers, and almost all of them have written memoirs or autobiographies when they get to a certain age. They want to 
see a sense of their life. And so I figure this is as clear, nearest I can get. I'm curious about people, especially women who've spent their life making art, and then what are they supposed to do with it? I, was, I started thinking about that. Well, I'm going to, what if I die someday? Oh, no, not me, but everybody else will. But, and uh, what's going to happen to all this work? And I look through old slides or old uh, cards or things, and I see paintings. Oh, I remember that one. That was, I like that one. And also, if you have a retrospective, it's up to the curator to pick what they want. And they never do anything really autobiographical. It's just the work that they like the best. I wanted to pick out what I wanted, and I wanted it huge. I wanted it really big. I mean, even a retrospective at its most will be 50 or 60 or 70 pieces, and that would be considered really large. I'm going to do it bigger than that. I'm going to have <laughs> maybe 100 paintings and maybe 100 photographs and a little sculpture and everything I can, that I feel like I want in there. Um, why am I in here? Does anybody have any idea? She was a good model. I love to draw over at Barnstall because here we all are with our little pads, drawing from the model in this kind of shabby room, very quiet. She's kind of cold. We turn on a heater or he, you know, and we're just sitting there drawing. And it's the purest act. It's completely egoless. It's about what can I see? What can I see? Can I see better? And it makes you feel part of a tradition that that's what, that's the old fashioned way. That's what people have been doing since the Renaissance. And uh, that's a really nice feeling. There's this fear of being sentimental and unintellectual and uh, not getting it, not getting it, not being cool. Sometimes mine get so sentimental that I have to destroy them. I'm not ironic. I, I'm ironic in person, but not in my art. I'm not interested in that. And that's, if, if it isn't political or ironic, those were the two big art making categories and kind of hit your head over you know, hit you over the head with politics, which is, you know, not interesting to me in terms of transcendence. It's interesting to me in my life, but not in my art. Okay, here's this quote that I, you can see it's been up for many years, and, uh, and it's a guy, somebody named Miss Sony, who I don't even know who that is, and oh, where I can, says, light glorifies everything. It transforms and ennobles the most commonplace and ordinary subjects. The object is nothing. Light is everything. And that's what I'm really after in a lot of my work, is that transformative quality. And you can see it. I mean, we can have an ordinary day, and then somebody will be sitting in a shaft of light, and suddenly they're transformed. This was from part of the swimming pool series, I thought that everybody around a swimming pool, all over the world, they become the same. It's sort of a universal place. You know, somebody's always throwing a kid in the air. I think you could go to any country in the world and everywhere around a pool, people would be doing the same things. I, all of my friends who are artists, most of them, actually I have a few who are complete self-starters, but most of them go through these periods of doubt and wondering what am I going to do and it's so boring and I'm so stupid and why am I making art and what's it mean and and uh, but once you get caught up in it that's the payoff I mean that's the thrilling part and that's what I'm really after <laughs>